Look how brilliantly he mixes patterns. You know, he uses scales and colorings that relate to each other. Now, this is a contrast. This is what Angelo Darga did. I think this was 1983. Once in a while, I'll remember an exact date. Um, this was what he did for Ralph Lauren. I don't know. I think Ralph Lauren still lives in this apartment. I don't know whether he's redone it since then. I do have to tell you, I said you wouldn't have to change it. You know, if it were done now, maybe it would be done more dramatically. Maybe there would be a piece of art furniture someplace instead of, in the 80s, they were using a, this was probably photographed from Architectural Digest. And I have to tell you, there was a time when every photographer, particularly I think this one, used, you know, there would be the tree, if you go through all decorating magazines, you will see there was a time when there's the trees sticking out of the front, you know, sticking there, that breaking up the line. Um, there would be the magazine and the, sometimes the open magazine on the coffee table with a pair of glasses on it. I mean, I remember propping photographs that that was sort of what you did. Nowadays, you know, it's done less. Well, it's also they have Photoshop, they change things. But, uh, but the, the plant thing was very, very 80s. Um, this kind of all white would be, again, for, for Ralph Lauren. He works with colors and pattern all day. He probably loves coming home to something this simple. Uh, in case you don't know, there was an Angelo Doggett. He was very famous at this time. He was an important designer. He was the first designer to do a line of furniture for a furniture manufacturer. Wasn't too successful because it was too sophisticated for the mass market. But nowadays, you know, everybody is doing that. Uh, there is, he started a textile firm and an upholstery firm. You know, those are still in operation. At the same time, you had John Dickinson in California doing a totally different look and doing um, anthropomorphic designs like this animal foot looking piece. There, you see Dickson, uh, Dickinson stuff is coming up at auction now. They're accent pieces of furniture, consoles, little tables, coffee tables, all their plaster, all white plaster, and they look like sort of animal feet or bones. And they're you know, people use them as accent pieces. He used a lot of more. Sometimes they're artificially, they, they look as though they're draped fabric over a table and it's all concrete. Or, I'm sorry, plaster. David Hicks, who I mentioned earlier, was a British designer who made, like, geometric patterns popular, not just the checkerboard, and this reminds me, the circles as well. His first agent in the United States was named Mark Hampton. Have you heard of Mark Hampton? See, he, only, he also died a few years ago. Mark Hampton and Albert Hadley, I would say, were the two biggest design names in, I don't know, the past decade or so. Two biggest name decorators. And um, ha Hampton died younger. Hadley died at, if I didn't say about 92. This was Hampton's early apartment. And he was obviously showing up off his boss's furniture, and then went on to design this kind of thing himself. Now this is, he was uh, classically inspired. Most of his interiors that I've seen were traditional. He didn't use a lot of